Super plates. Super bowls. What's happening this weekend? I hope it's coming out the weekend at Super Bowl. You might find out, and I don't know about that with me, Jim Jeffries. Wait, super plates? Yeah, because <laughs> there's a super bowl and then a and super no, plate. No, no, I got it. When is the super bowl? I think this. Comes I think out it's after this weekend. No, I think it's this weekend. It's right? the thirteenth. Oh, know okay, it's the thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is the week of the super bowl. So, so right now, the, the, my prediction is it's the LA Rams playing the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, must be exciting for all the football. That's your that's your prediction. That's my prediction. Yeah, mm. is that a good prediction? Uh, I mean, it's not terrible. They're, they're, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, so good work, all the people who made it to the Super Bowl. How's everyone doing? We have today, we have a friend, uh, Jim, who has brought us lobster rolls from Cousin Maine Lobster. Uh, Jim Salikas. Yeah. Well, J- if, you, you might know Jim from his lobster trucks and his lobster roll. He was on Shark Tank back in the day. How are you and Barb's going? Is, oh. is Does Babs still call you on the regular? Yeah, go, she calls me every night. You go, 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 you boys, <laughs> you got to get some more things. Did she do that? Or yeah, what? we're still real close with her. Are you still partners with her? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, no, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, you brought us in a whole lot of lobster. I did. And and and, and like Amazing. this is this is how good a person I am because lobster rolls. In case you haven't noticed, is my favorite meal, and especially when I'm high. But even when I'm not high, <laughs> I I buy the kits and I just fucking go hell for leather. And then, do you find this after you eat like two, three pounds of lobster in a day <laughs> that, that your shits are like a slight pink color? <laughs> First of all, two to three pounds a day is a lot. I've no, I've, I've done two pounds of lobster in a day, man. No fucking no problem. When I leave here, I'm going to eat two or three pounds, and I'm going to report back on the shits. You no, know, it's not. It's not like the shits are. They're a nice, firm shit. There's a lot of protein, but they they have they have it a pink. Are you trying to sell his company for people to go there? You're yeah, like, yeah, it's great stuff. Who else is going to eat two pounds of shits? Cousin man, yeah. I'm going to tell you the pink shit challenge. You're going to go there. You got to eat two pounds and. 24 hour period. I'm telling you, it's got a lovely hue to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love like, like I'm not kidding. Cause we've talked about your lobster rolls on the podcast before and I, no advertising, no money given to me, couple of rolls here and there. <laughs> right. But I, I'm a big fan oh, yeah, and forest is my favorite meal, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, there, there was recently someone I, when this new touring group member and she called me or texted me, she goes, what does Jim like to eat? I'm like, if you can get him lobster rolls, <laughs> she goes, we're like, a, trust me. It doesn't matter what, what's going on that day. If he's having a bad day, it'll immediately be changed. If there's a lobster that's, roll on his green That's head. right. I'd flown into fucking Fort Myers or some shit. Here, oh, we, yeah. here we go, Fort Myers. How about just, I don't know. <laughs> Put a hotel up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to you have tourism? That, put, that's uh, it was, yeah, it was Fort Myers. And you put, could, some, uh, put somewhere for people to stay. <laughs> the hotel. You're having problems at the hotel. That's what it was. And then the, We our, put you in America Best yeah, Stays for like a two hours yeah. until we could. When, when you told me the name of that, America's Best, I was like, wow. That was like, I, that reminded me of my early comedy days. I'm like, that is a class A. It was a hotel chill. where the check-in was a... A, a screen of an Indian guy's head. Now he might have been just up the road, but I think he was in India, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and it was just like a screen oh, of this like a television guy's screen. Head. Yeah, a television screen. I, wait, I have not heard this. Yeah, heard this. yeah, you rock up. There's a machine. There's a machine for checkout. There's no. You could bloody. You just flown on a red eye too, right? Flying on a red and eye. You had to pick up the rental car because his openers weren't there yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I really picked up a rental car and then I went to the hotel and they went, "Oh, we don't." I paid for the night before and they went. We don't have a room. We gave your room away. We gave your room Why? away. And I go, but I paid for it. And I said I was coming in. They go, yeah, I'm sorry. And I go, are you fucking? I started swearing. Are you fucking kidding? And they're like, you're not allowed in this hotel. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, I'll be fucking back and you can get <laughs> fucked. It was like, I hadn't slept for hours. I don't give a fuck. They gave my fucking room away. Anyway. I started tweeting about how the hotel sucks balls. And then all of a sudden my room was free in an hour. And that was a different hotel though. Then you went to this other oh, one. Oh no, no, screen. then they sent me to this one. I, saw, I tried to find you the close, the only available the hotel. The first hotel was a shithole that yeah, I that, 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 no, and then the second I hotel. That one, yeah. The second hotel didn't even have a hole. It was just a <laughs> shit. 
Right? It was just unburied a buried sh- shit. It was an unburied <laughs> shit on concrete, so it would never go back to the earth. It was just sitting there steaming. The, the name of that hotel, and there, it's a chain. I said, uh, America's Best Value Inn. <laughs> you already know. Yeah. Like, this is the best value for yeah. that thing. You, what do you have? It's 35 $10? bucks. Yeah. It was $35 for the night. <laughs> yeah, it's good. How room. do they afford to do that? Does it? It costs more than that to wash sheets, people. <laughs> like, like, I mustn't have had a fresh towel. Yeah, it's not <laughs> good. I've stayed so, in many early So for $35, room. I go in and there's a screen Indian bloke comes up on the screen and he's like ah oh, do you want to stay here and I was like yep and then he just looked at me like are you sure <laughs> <laughs> are you yeah, running from some- are you <laughs> running from something yeah 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 and it's like all right well once you finish your drug deal in an hour I just leave your keys <laughs> <laughs> and once you hand over the bag of money that's all the only place you would do this is if you're hiding from the cops or you had a drug deal no one stayed in this hotel for more than two hours ever <laughs> anyway, so so then there's a machine at the bottom that squirts out the tickets. What? What tickets? You fucking your little card. Oh, the room keys. The room keys. keys. Oh, They're yeah. like the plastic cards that squirts them out. Are you like? I like how he got mad at you for not knowing what type of tickets you would get. Oh, those oh, yeah. ski ball tickets. Oh, yeah, you pay thirty five dollars <laughs> and then you get a couple of tickets to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking to a vending machine. <laughs> how, did, how did we get onto this? Because. You were having such a bad day. Oh, you you got got a <laughs> and the tour manager, she texted me because it was you're, it was very new with this new tour group. And she goes, hey, I want to, I know Jim's having a bad day. Like, what could I put in his green room or, 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 or something that'll make him feel better? And I go, lobster rolls. And I remember she was like, lobster rolls. I'm like, trust me, if you just put <laughs> lobster rolls in there, just find wherever the best lobster roll in for mine. It's Florida. So you found some probably. Decent quality, and then I think she put them in there, right? Well, I, when yeah. I then I went back to the hotel after I started bitching on. on I very rarely play this card, but I played my social media card. And I said, this fucking hotel sucks dicks. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, the guy wrote to me and explained the thing. They found the number. They know that I booked the extra night room. They they just gave my room away when they shouldn't. We, they'd all been contacted. Yeah, yeah. Just gave the room away. And so, but as with everything. You can get me a fucking room. Don't they always do this? Oh, the rooms will be ready at three. All yeah. of them. All of them are ready at three. You put the mint on the pillow on every single fucking hotel room exactly the same. Way. Of course, one's finished, then another one's finished. It's a power play. Anyway, so so the guy goes, uh, go back there. We're so sorry, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, one of the people there will be standing waiting in the foyer with the ticket. And the woman who told me I was banned from the hotel for swearing <laughs> had to stand there just holding the ticket like fucking hell. Well, it was we, her? Wow. Yeah, here we go. So I walked back in and I went, I went, thank you for that. And and I, I said uh, I said so I was booked in correct because she says I wasn't booked in at all, <laughs> right? And she goes, just go to your room, sir. And I, and, I, and I went like this. I went, you can't fucking kick me out now. <laughs> and they didn't. I marched past security, everything up to my fucking room. Didn't order any room service. So I assume it would have been shit in. <laughs> so you didn't get lobster rolls? Out no, there? no, no, no. I, I got lobster rolls at the actual uh, the actual thing. Uh, Do you guys have? Location of Florida? We do. We're in uh, Neptune Beach, uh, Miami, oh. and uh, opening on the on the west. But they have. D- but do you use Maine lobsters in Florida, or do you use Florida lobsters? No, yeah, it's all it's all from our place in Maine. So when uh, they got okay. to country, they've got they the, the different lobsters. They've there. got the real lobster shipped in every day. No, no, no. no but in Florida, there's a. Spiny I'm telling lobster. you, if they I open more okay. restaurants, the oceans is empty. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I grew up in Miami, and we used to go lobstering. But in, and, it's a different and, species. And spiny right. lobster. Yeah. They don't have claws. Yeah. They just you just eat the tail, and you can kind of eat that. But yeah, I no, we do we do the same. It's not as good. I, I it, the main lobster is better. Like That's I, what I, I think in, too, I but it's, it might be a bias. I, I, I always go on about Australian food and Australian prawns. I believe are the yeah. best in the world. And, sort of and then I'll go Australian oysters, Australian this, Australian fish, blah blah blah, salmon. What's going? But I tell you what, Australian we call it crayfish. There it doesn't yeah. have yeah. the things, but it's still the same sort of species There's with a, with a tail. Rock bay rock. Yeah, thing yeah. yeah. Rock. Um, Morton Bay bugs. Yeah, they were good. Mm, the but, bugs but are it's fantastic. Not like a lobster, yeah. You Google a Morton Bay okay, bug. It's yeah. like a, it's like a bug like this. It's a, from the lobster family. Okay, I okay. Um, fantastic. But I will say this: the Australian crayfish is nowhere near as good as Maine lobster. That's your number one. That's American food where they're shitting on the Australians. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to read some ads now. Yeah, let's do some ads. Uh, I'd rather talk about lobster. <laughs> Go on. <Well. laughs> All right. Let's do some ads. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's easy to waste time on your phone mindlessly scrolling, but what if you could actually make screen time a good time? Mm-hmm. With Scribd, you've got more than a great reading subscription. You've got a resource from learning new skills, 
Maybe you want to learn how to meditate, uh, level up your cooking game, or launch your career to new heights. Whatever your goals are, Scribs Library can help you achieve it. Uh, I've, I've got a biography. I'm listening, El- I'm listening to Elton John's biography. Oh, yeah. how's that going? Oh, I'm just up to the bee. He's lost a bit of hair. <laughs> Yeah, he's down all right. Whole chapter on that. Yeah, he's he's written your song, and at this stage, he's still going. I like the ladies, Uh, (laughs) but it's uh, very good. I I like Elton John. With Scribd, you've got tons of information and inspiration to help you achieve your goals. They've got ebooks, audio books, podcasts, and magazine articles on just about every subject. Learn career growth, uh, personal development, entrepreneurial ship, or how to strive. Survive. No, I no how to strive. In the zombie apocalypse. Oh, okay. I'm not just surviving, Kelly Bear. I'm living, baby. (laughs) I think you mean thrive. (laughs) I tink different. (laughs) And if you just want to start reading more for fun, for knowledge, or just for new experiences, Scribd's ever-expanding library has you covered. With Scribd, the world's most fascinating library is at your fingertips, all for just $999, which I think is a very reasonable price for every single book and magazine yeah. and thing in the world. That's, that's a month. Very reasonable. Oh, they put one of those stupid dots in there again. <laughs> Says here nine ninety nine, which would be far too cheap for all these type of things. <laughs> what? The price is nine ninety nine. That's under ten dollars for you morons out there, <laughs> right? Nine ninety nine. Right. Stupid that's for. They put a stupid dot. They put one of those stupid dots. It's, it's surely must mean nine hundred and ninety nine dollars because this is far too much for nine ninety nine. No, we checked with Kelly. It's $9.99. Yeah, All right, nine ninety nine. Yeah. Let's rip these people off. Get the subscription. <laughs> Explore all your interests in any format with millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more. Get instant access to Scribd's entire library for less than the cost of a single book. It couldn't be simpler. No complicated credits or additional purposes. Purchases <laughs> or additional purposes. <laughs> right now, Scribd is offering our listeners two months of Scribd for only nine dollars and ninety nine cents. No, nope, no, nope, nope. that $9. would be that would be the same price. This is just what ni- the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Scribd is offering two months of Scribd for ninety nine cents. That's pretty good. <laughs> Do it now because this company is going to go bankrupt. This is <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> These prices are too cheap for such a great deal. So go to uh, try.scribd.com slash IDK and get the first two months for less than a dollar. American, I assume. Yeah. Yes. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. <laughs> Could have been the pound. That's worth more. <laughs> It's not called a dollar as well. Yeah. A lot of hurdles. There's a dollar symbol <laughs> thing next to that. We're not by the dot. It could be Australian dollars. Oh, yeah. That's try. It's not, it's not, it's American. All right. That's yeah. try.scribd, S C R I B D dot com slash I D K. Scribd, the only way to not read. <laughs> that was a tag. A good tag. Uh. Well, Green Chef. Oh, what can I say that hasn't already been said about Green Chef? It's America's number one meal kit for eating well. The best. With, with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Green Chef's options for every lifestyle, including Kato, Paleo, Keto, yeah. Keto yeah. Paleo, Vegan, and all the Jackson 5. I've done the joke before. I'm doing it again. <laughs> Enjoy. No, Keto, Paleo, Vegan, Vegetarian, Fast and Fit, Mediterranean, and Gluten-Free. Their pre-portioned ingredients mean that you'll actually reduce your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping. Green (laughs) chef. Gross. Yeah, just like you get out of the house and you've got a trolley like a fucking caveman. Who are you, Korag? (laughs) Green chef makes cooking easy so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious delicious home-cooked meals. Uh, look, I, I, I could talk more about this, but I'm going to pass this to Forrest. Forrest, what did you eat this week? Oh, um, I had, there was first a bad- give me First, give me a shitty meal that you ate that wasn't Green Chef, and then give me a Green Chef so we compare Ooh. how good Green Chef was I, in the difference. I ordered something like um, that got delivered, and it was just burger. It was the worst fucking thing ever. It was one of the worst meals I've ever had, Ser- seriously. Mm. And uh, I'm not going to say the name because I don't think we should. But the... Uh, 
But then Green Chef, I had two things. I had a thing that wasn't like, uh, it was like a quesadilla with uh, like bell peppers and chicken and stuff that you saute and you put in there. But I also had this barramundi uh, with like a barramundi. Australian fish. It's like if it's a fish, yeah. It's like it was like a butter sauce Mm. with like veggies and stuff like that. So, you know, you can go both. Like that's a healthier meal. And then, um, you know, it's a butter sauce, but it's healthier. And then, you know, but they also have like, Tacos and Casey, all these different things, soups that I made. I make a Tom Guy soup. It's like a Thai soup. I make it's the best. And what was better, the barramundi, the Tom Guy soup, or the meal that you hated from the other place? (laughs) Probably the, you know, it was good. The barramundi was really good. I like Green Chef wins again. (laughs) (laughs) Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know one. Yes, barramundi was best. Yes, go to greenchef.com slash I don't know 130 and use the code. I don't know one thirty now. I know oh, you get a dollar thirty off. Right? I know yeah. what you're all thinking back yeah. there. What, why put a one thirty on? All the other codes are just I don't know. Why is there one thirty on it? Because you get a hundred and thirty dollars off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash I don't know one thirty and use the code I don't know one thirty to get hundred and thirty dollars off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Uh, please welcome our guest today, Professor Jeremy Black. And now it's time to play. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Judging a book by its cover. Well, I've already been told that uh, Jeremy here is a professor, and I've I, I, when he when he logged on, I heard him say hello. Jeremy, I, I assume you're from the south of England. I am indeed. I was born in London. London, yeah, I can see. I can, you wouldn't know a northern to a southern accent, would I, you? I look. I know enough to know that he's from South London, probably. No, 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 no. He's, he's not from South London. No, I think. no, but no, no, no. I've, got what's, I've got what's known as estuarine twang, which yeah. is a yeah. kind of lower class London accent. Uh, it's called estuarine, the estuary of the Thames, twang, because it sounds like a bit twangy. That's yeah. crazy because that sounds so high class to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, idea yeah. that that would be considered low class anywhere. I oh, know, even like John Oliver's accent isn't super posh and wow. everyone thinks he's a professor. Well, you are a professor, Jeremy. But, <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, but but North England, it's all like, wah, wah, wah. it's like you can tell people from North England. They're yeah, like, no, but it, yeah, yeah, like they sound like Liam Gallagher yeah, or something like that. Yeah, he doesn't sound like Liam <laughs> Okay, so you're, ask, him, you're, ask him some questions. You're, ask you're a London professor. Uh, is your are you we are we talking about what you're a professor in? Is that the subject? I'm a history professor. All right, history, uh, history. Okay, 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 don't tell me too much. Yeah, right, history, yeah. history. Okay, uh, is it the history? Is it something in pop culture? No, though I have written books about James Bond and Agatha Christie, but it's not the history. Oh, of I hear they used to fuck like rabbits, those two. <laughs> um. <laughs> Professor Jeremy Black has written over 180 books just yet. 180 know. books? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I've probably only read about 90 of them. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so, uh, okay, so uh, is it, is, are we talking about a war? Nope. Oh, God, this I- is something that I think you're going to know a lot about because I've heard you talk about it before. Yep. Okay, give me a hint. Okay. Something and your, your mom, mom was a huge fan of. Is like a huge fan. The of monarchy, the kings, there the queens, the okay. royal family. That's too good of a clue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, my the one m- thing your mother loved, it's never Jim. Or <laughs> I, I, I was talking <laughs> about this just this morning with someone who was over at the house. When, when, when I was a child, my mother loved the monarchy so much. Still, right till the day she died, loved the monarchy. And um, I used to have to go out and stand on the side of the road on a school day holding flowers when the queen was going to walk by <laughs> in the off chance that I would be one of the ones to hand her the flowers. <laughs> I got very close with Diana once and handed some flowers that got handed over, you know, oh. but I was already like in my early teens then, you know, like my mother would make me do this. So when I, when I, I'm not a monarchist, I'm sorry, Jeremy. Well, let me, let me should... introduce them properly first. Here, okay. okay. We're going to be talking about the Royal family and professor Jeremy Black is a British historian writer and former professor of history at the University of Exeter. He is a senior fellow at the Center for the Study of America and the West at the Foreign Policy Research Institute in Philadelphia. Uh, uh, Professor Jeremy Black is the author of over 180 books, as I said, principally but not exclusively on 18th century British politics and international relations, and has been described as, quote, the most prolific historical scholar of our age. Mm. Um, And then, you know, we're specifically talking about the royal family today, so... I'm assuming you have a lot of knowledge in that. We booked you for that, right? <laughs> 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 I'm going to do my best. Yeah, it is the royal family of England we're talking about, right? Not like the Danish one or anything like that. 
You are right. Okay, you are good. Right. Okay, so I'll tell this story very quickly. So I moved over to England, and this is basically tell you in the early 2000s, uh, 2001. And after that, my mother, who was a huge monarchist, I neither here nor there about the royal family. I'm not anti as such. I just don't understand. Okay. And so I was day drinking. I'd been in England for about three weeks and I was day drinking in a pub and the queen mother had died and my mother rings me up and I'm drunk. It's two in the <laughs> afternoon or something. And my mother goes, you must go out to see the procession. The Queen Mother's carriage is going through London right now. This is an opportunity of a lifetime that you'll <laughs> never get again. And I'm outside with my drink and I'm holding me beer and I go, Mum, I don't give a shit. What are you bothering me like this for? <laughs> well, oh, fucking hell, Mum. No, no. And then I went, oh, there she is. She <laughs> She, and the carriage rolled by. Just passing the bar. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I was like, all right, I saw that. I went back to drinking. I'm pretty, it was the opportunity of a lifetime, wasn't it? I'm I pretty sure remember. you told that story on the Patreon podcast. Which you can listen but to. Not many people are listening to that yet, so subscribe and you'll get it two weeks earlier. Old story, so. But uh, still a good story. Um, so do you think you know a lot about this? I think I know a fair bit about the modern royal family i don't believe yeah. if you start asking me about henry the fourth and all that type of stuff um, no i'll I have just, a few more problems it's just normally we ask you all the questions and our guest sits there and listens and then we come back and go over all the questions i just sometimes when you know a lot about something it's not as funny so uh <laughs> i was thinking about going like question by question but you think i should just give you all the questions at once i think i could go question by i think right. i think sort of uh from world war ii Onwards, I think I know a bit. Well, this is what we're going to do, Professor Black. Where I'm going to ask Jim, usually we ask all the questions, and then we come back to you. I'm going to ask him one at a time, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that way we can just kind of do it that way. I'll, I'll see what his answer is, and then you can correct him or tell him he's great. Mm -hmm. um, I had like then some That's not the only two options there, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you, can just, you can just say I'm good. You can't hit yeah. me from there, can you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to say I'm great. I'll tell you one more I'll story, Jeremy. Out. We did a thing on the Jim Jeffrey show where we went out and talked about the monarchy and we talked to a whole lot of people. And there was this bloke, remember this? Yeah, I don't remember yeah. his name right now. Yeah, there was a bloke who- uh, Something Esquire. Here. Yeah, who, who was Long like, I name. very much like the- And I was talking to those royal correspondent people, right? And we were talking about- the wedding of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. And so we were talking that, and there was this one bloke, he goes, well, I much rather rabbit. And he was talking about that. Anyway, it turned out his name was like Tony Angelopi from New Jersey, and he was a fraud, and he'd broken into this community. Remember uh, that? His name oh, is. Yes. Oh, there's been a cat. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. I, I interviewed that guy. I got him. <laughs> Thomas James Mace Archer Mills. Yeah, but what's his real name? Born Thomas Muscatello. Thomas yeah. Muscatello. His, name, his name's Tommy Muscatello. And he's American, but he puts on a fake accent. Wow. Yeah, he's born. He's born in um, New York. And uh, what borough? I think Glen Falls, New York, in central New York. Oh. But he, but he put on this. We had him on and thought he was British. No, oh, yeah, I was uh, eating cucumber sandwiches yeah. with him, <laughs> and he was there telling me. And he goes, and then I was eating, and he was like, "Do you really have to eat so fast?" And he do had you want a, a napkin? Do you want, want a, a napkin? napkin like this? And I was like, "Ah, <laughs> oh, calm down." I was being all rough and strained. Calm down, Tony. It'll be all right. <laughs> and it turns out he's a bloody Guido from New York. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that word? Does that get me in trouble? I've said a lot yeah, about the Jer honor. Jersey Shore says it affectionately. Imagine if that's yeah. what gets you canceled. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Guido, you're done. All right. Um, I think we should do it the normal way. I don't know that he's gonna. Okay, we're know gonna all do. We're gonna do it the normal way. So right, let's go. We're, so we're, Jeremy, gonna we're gonna ask all the questions of him first, right. and I will take notes, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, but you're gonna okay. grade him on his answers. Zero through ten. Ten's the best. Just give him a zero's the worst. Ten's the best. You can give me a cumulative score. Kelly's gonna grade him zero through ten on confidence. I'm gonna grade him et cetera, and we'll add those together. And if twenty-one through thirty, royal family, that's the best. 11 through 20, royal friend, and 0 through 10, royal acquaintance. <laughs> I didn't spend a lot of time with those, but that's not bad. Yeah, he laughed. I, 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 like, laughed. Him. Right. I like him too. Right. Uh, Jim, how oh, did... I want to be the worst one to be King Ralph. No. Nope. Uh, I love that movie. That's <laughs> no, not your Could show. Could that happen? Could King Ralph happen in reality? Tell me you've seen no. King Ralph. He said no. Oh, there was happen. no King Ralph. No, but do you remember the movie with John Goodman? What happened was, if you haven't seen no, it, no, people, no, let's get to I'll the give questions. the synopsis right, to Jeremy we'll very, very quickly. You've talked about King Ralph on like it's, every podcast. It's really. fantastic. <laughs> they all get photographed as at once. Bandits. They're in a puddle. They all get electrocuted, and there's only one king left, and he's like a blues singer, and his name's Ralph. Get it on video. You'll love it. <laughs> okay. Right. 
All right, let's edit that out. All right, so <laughs> Jim, how how did the monar- monarchy originate and when? I don't know. I think it's one of those like things. There would have me. been someone defeated someone in some battle, and then there were a lady of the lake and a sword and a stone. Right. What is the <laughs> British national anthem? God save the queen. Okay. And one. it changes with the monarchy. It'll say God save the king, and it'll yeah. go back and forth. What does the abbreviation HM stand for? Her Royal Majesty. HM? Okay. What are Her the, Majesty. What are the queen's duties? Um, she, 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 uh, well, her duties aren't official duties as such anymore. They used to be a different thing, but it, it's to reign over and then they'll do, she'll do things like she'll open parliament. She has to speak to the prime minister when they get voted in. She comes to Australia and she waves a bit, you know, that's, that's it's what it duty. is. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the Commonwealth? The Commonwealth is a collection of countries that uh, are all linked to Great Britain. Um, they're normally countries that were, uh, they say, conquered um, by, so Australia, um, Canada, uh, United Kingdom, obviously, the north of uh, Ireland. Uh, uh, but then there's other places that are a bit more like where you go, oh, what's all that about? Um, where, anything with the Union Jack in the corner what is it, part of it. What is the role of the royal family? Should I ask that? Um, well, the raw, the okay, so mostly charity work these days and um, public appearances. You know. Okay, could the royal family always marry marry commoners? No, no. The Queen and Prince Philip are cousins. I think they're quite distant. So you do know a lot about this. And You're he's very confident. And, and he's from Greece. There's a lot of inbreeding going on in the royal family. Um, why does the Queen have two birthdays? And Prince Andrew can't even marry an adult anymore. It's. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why, Got him. <laughs> why? Why does that, why does the queen have two birthdays? Um, one of them's a public holiday, and one of them's her actual birthday. But I think it's because uh, that public holiday will always remain on the same day, so that we're not moving. Because imagine if the queen's birthday is Christmas, we don't want to miss out on a bloody holiday. So they have the official day, and then they have another day. Uh, okay. Yeah. When did Queen Elizabeth II become queen, and how old was she at the time of her coronation? <laughs> she was very young. Um, Geez, I wish I watched the Royals or the Crown or whatever. But um, uh, I, I, she, she, she was she was very young. She she was in her twenties. Um, I believe it was the early the mid nineteen fifties was because she 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 was a mechanic in the Second World War and she wasn't the Queen at that stage. And so it was around the the 1950s. I know that she gave the Beatles, uh, you know, honorary things and stuff like that. So that was in the 60s. So it would have been a decade before that. It would be the 1950s. Okay. Um, What political party does the royal family favor? They're not meant to favor either political party, but if they had their way, it would be the Tories. Is that a trick question? Yeah. 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 Crushing that. I told you we should have done this one at a time. Uh, (laughs) Which king had six different wives? Um... Henry the sixth, eight. Mm-hmm. Henry the fifth. Henry the uh, Henry the eighth. How many Henrys are there? It's not a question. There. Well, it sounds like eight of them, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, who was the first queen of England? The first queen of England, um, uh, Queen Victoria. All right. How many spaces on a chessboard can she move? No, I'm kidding. It's not on. Okay. Um, there would have been one before Queen Victoria, but she's the one that they did all the movies about. And she's the one, the reason that like Australia's got a state called Victoria and not, not the current Queen Victoria, but Queen Victoria the first. James the first was the first to be king of England and which other country at the same time? King of England and Scotland. Okay. I'm going to skip over some of these. We got to it. Mary the first killed many people during her reign. What is her nickname? Um, um, Murder Mary. The West Side Stalker. <laughs> oh. The, the Night Stalker. The oh, Night Stalker. Like Jack the Ripper. <laughs> um, which king became the first English monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne? Okay, to voluntarily, I, I forgot. What does abdicate mean? Abdicate means to leave the throne, to walk uh, away you, from you, it. So, wow. so I know I'm that need it. We I, don't even need I know it. that it's uh, so King Bertie, who was the one with a stutter, which is the king's speech, it was his brother, and I'm I want to say, I can't remember his name. I think it was King. 
think maybe Richard was his name. I might get the name. He was the one he abdicated because he married a divorcee American and that was just not going to happen and uh, he wanted to be off with her. But also he had a few... He had a few Nazi ties that people weren't happy about. He used to hang out with Hitler a bit and think he was all right. <laughs> True or false, the Queen weighs her guests when they arrive and leave at Christmas. Uh, false. I think it sounds like it has to be true because it's so weird and how could you make it up? <laughs> Let's say it's true. Why would she do that? Okay, well, first of all, she has someone do it. There's no way the Queen's the, yeah, the Queen. Those the, math the, yeah, scales, the so. Queen. The Queen shuffles out after a big meal, holding the scout. It's time, everyone, <laughs> and, and then stands on it. On you get, William. Someone's gotten fat, right? She doesn't do that. Okay, so you don't know why she would do that if she did. She would do it just to um, check just some for balances. Body shaming. Yeah. <laughs> In case somebody stole some silverware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, oh, yeah, what? that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should check the pewter out, man. What royal house does the current queen belong to? What was its original name? Uh, well, she she lives in the house the, the house of Windsor. Okay. Um, I don't know any of this stuff. But, so the, yeah. but, but before that, they had a German name, and it was changed in the after the the First World War. It was changed to the name of Windsor because the German name wasn't as good because they didn't they wanted to cut german ties after that and i think even now it, it was pronounced vinza but yeah. uh i don't know about that That's, but, but they, they they changed it because of the war they didn't want to be under the german name anymore okay i'm gonna ask a couple of these and skip ahead and we can start oh, oh who is next in line for the throne i think you probably know that the next in line for the throne is prince charles i i think ask me how far i can go with this i reckon i can go a fair distance on this oh. well, i don't have to ask you you could just do it okay <laughs> Don't so, do so, so you'll go Charles, <laughs> so you go Charles, then you'll go uh, William, mm -hmm. then you go George, yeah. little, little Prince George, yeah. and then you go whoever his brother is. Forgotten his name. So you can't go that far. No, no <laughs> I've forgotten his name, but George's little brother. Oh, Tad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prince yeah. Tad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, then, uh, and then you go to Harry, yeah. and then you go to Archie. And so it used to be like Prince Harry was like, like third in line and now he's dropped down to, plus another, he's dropped down to fifth. Okay, which country, uh, you kind of answered this with the Commonwealth, so I want to ask that. Which hereditary disease was so common in European royals that it was called the royal disease? Uh, I want to go with AIDS, but... Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> the royal disease, would, I, no, no, I, I would say it's gout. Oh, it's not hereditary. Gout's not hereditary, yeah, yeah, but was, gout, uh, yeah, gout's always was. called the king's disease because they, the King George and all those, uh, yeah. King Henry and all that, were eating just turkey legs and rah, 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 and drinking mead, and uh, that was making <laughs> all their joints all, all stuff, getting cheese from France and whatnot. Um, so I would say syphilis. Yeah. No, that's not hereditary either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Some families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to say dyslexia. <laughs> Two members of the royal family have competed in the Olympics. In which sport? Uh, Princess Anne competed in equestrian. No. Um, who's the Queen's sister. How do you know this? <laughs> My mother was a monarchist, man. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 the Queen competed in bobsled. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> where's that? I, don't know. I, I assume. No, I assume there'd be. I assume it would, movie. No, I assume it would be. Okay, so Queen Anne Equestrian. I, I assume there might be, like, like Princess Zara is married to a rugby player. So I don't know if he. You know, rugby's not in the Olympics. Um, there would be some other sort of posh-ish sort of a, a sport like Equestrian, or there was never fox hunting in the. I Olympics. think bobsled. You said bobsled. Bobsled right. the Queen. Well, we'll, we'll a couple more here. We'll scoot out. What body language indicates the Queen is done with the conversation? Uh, what's that? What body language indicates the queen is done with a conversation? She lifts up one cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and she just lets one tear. That would be awesome. That would be that worth, be awesome. worth the, the power. Right? And, the, yeah, yeah. and the queen is <laughs> done. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, there's, there's things like you're not meant to continue eating after she's finished no, no, eating. No, she's going to do something to say like, hey, I'm done talking to you. Uh, she does the the Russell Crowe Gladio. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> which which food is banned at Buckingham Palace? Uh, I read something just recently about from one of the old chefs of the Queen about what she would eat each day, and she's a pretty mild old eater. Mm. Um, I don't believe she's super into spicy food. 
I know that Prince Philip, uh, he's not around anymore, but Prince Philip was big on the barbecue. He liked to do the barbecue. What food is banned? No, no, no. I'm getting to <laughs> This is how you this tell stories. Process. This is how you got to do things, man. This is a fact dump. Yeah, it, do it. yeah, we're not doing quick rounds. We're nah, doing. Nah, nah, nah. I know your tricks here. You no, try to no, say no. things. No, no, no. We're doing who wants to be a millionaire. Like yeah. <laughs> um, Keep them honest. And for so us. she likes fish. She likes toast. She likes eggs. She likes. I'm going to say. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, uh, um, peanut M and M's. Okay, Not last, last, last question. What is the surname of the royal family? Windsor. Windsor. Okay. All right, Professor Jeremy Black. Uh, how did Jim do in his knowledge of the royal family and things associated with that? And zero through ten, ten's the best. What do you think? I think he did jolly well. I'd give him an eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well. Jolly well. I think you did very well. Mm. I'm going to start saying jolly well, by the way. I mean, yeah, that that's nice. Right. That's Made me good. feel good. Yeah, jolly well. <laughs> All right. These Americans, they drive you up the fucking wall, don't they, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to live with the bastards. Holy <laughs> hell. Uh, Kelly, how are you doing confidence? I mean, 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gave you a, a 10 and et cetera. This is your highest score ever, maybe 28. Well, like real score. We've given you 1,000 before, but. <laughs> You're part of the royal family. Congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jim Windsor. I've always felt a little inbred. Jim Windsor. <laughs> California has great weather. Mm-hmm. It has great weather. As long as we don't get one of those tsunamis from the bloody the, the water in Tonga having an eruption, we're all good for the meanwhile. <laughs> California has great weather, but it does get rainy and cold in winter. And <laughs> well, of course, there's earthquakes that any day now, any day. <laughs> Um, but it does get uh, rainy and cold in the winter and the water's always messing up my shoes. Yeah, there's no drainage system in California, so everything's a freaking puddle that you're walking through. Yep. You, you walk through the water like this, splish, splosh, splish, splosh. That's how someone in Scribd would read that. Yep. <laughs> all birds, all birds will keep your feet warm and dry with the weather replacement wool dash. Weather, weather repellent. Weather repellent wool dashel mizzle shoe, which is the one I wear in it, Jack. Yep. yep. I got the middle shoes. Yep, me too. Now, I went to Universal the other day. I go to the theme parks with me kids, right? When you go there, that's the, 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 the other days you go, what's the most comfortable shoe I can mm-hmm. use? What shoe do I want to have on my feet? I'm going to be doing a lot of walking here. I take the Allbirds. Yep. I used to take shoes with air in them and shit like that and some memory foam thing. The Allbirds, I'm telling you, I can't, I, you know, Bloody comfortable They're super shoes. comfortable, yeah. And, and they just slip on your feet. The, I'll be honest, it feels like the laces are not even needed. <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah, do. They, like just, they, they suck you in nicely. Yeah, they suck you in. They just yeah. curve to your foot. The That's laces true. are just, just there as a fashion statement. But, you know, <laughs> maybe the people from uh, All Birds will ring me up and go, actually, they use for a I mean, other people probably run and stuff. So oh, maybe. yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm what they call, if I had a, a supervillain name, would be the Shuffler. <laughs> Uh, but I do. I wear, I wear it when I have to go for long walks or something like that. Yeah. And I've gotten some. Compl- my wife had some of her friends over, and I got some compliments Ooh. from the ladies. The ladies went. Are those all, all birds. All the birds love all uh, birds. Yeah, <laughs> those all birds. And they they said that as I was kicking them out of my house because because <laughs> they'd been here too long. The last thing they, they kicked saw- them out with the shoes. Oh yeah, they saw my foot as they were leaving. <laughs> No, I really, I really do. I really wear these. Since I've got these shoes, I've been wearing them 80% of the time. In fact, I'll wear them next podcast. Yeah. I don't know why I wore these shoes. Um, all birds uh, printed uh, the wool dasher mizzle carbon footprint right on its shoes so you know its impact on the planet. They Then they offset the footprint to zero to make it carbon neutral products. Now, my wife, we mentioned this before, is annoying. Oh, sorry, I mispronounced it. A vegan. <laughs> and my wife's a vegan, and she was like this. She went, ooh, they have vegan shoes. As soon as she saw them, she lit up because she knew I was wearing vegan shoes. And I walked off in my Fonzie leather jacket that I wear everywhere, and I went, eee. Anyway, so the carbon user, all birds build the wool dash and mizzle using natural materials that have a low environmental impact so you can break a sweat without breaking the planet. This winter, keep your feet cozy and dry with the all, boy, all birds wool dasher mizzles. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A L L B I R D S.com. I truly mean this. Buy these shoes, have a walk around, tell me I'm wrong. Most comfortable shoes you'll ever wear. The holiday rush season is over, but this is not the time to start slacking on shipping for your customers. 
Shipping delays, supply shortages, holiday demand. Last year was a mess. Now you're ringing in the new year with impatient customers, returns and expensive shipping rates. It's time to switch to a shipping solution that can handle it all painlessly. Why would you use anything but ShipStation, the easiest and most convenient choice for e-commerce sellers? Import orders from the sales channel. Ship using any character, uh, any carrier with... <laughs> you can skip these are you little, little jumping ones. On, are you doing something on my screen, Kelly? No. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Ship using any carrier with and with deeply discounted rates. Order, don't do that, Kelly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's just typing in a document. Automate <laughs> just about any shipping task. Oh, yeah, he's memorized. Kelly deserves a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest, you still, <laughs> you still got that rock shop on Etsy? How's it going for you? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's going pretty good. Because you mean, haven't been shipping them out. COVID, man, things have been taken off with the rock shop. And, you know, the best way you got to do it, you can't do face-to-face -face <laughs> rock transactions anymore. You got to do it off the shipping. So it's pretty good, man. I, I use ShipStation. Yeah, what's, what's the slogan at your rock shop? Hey, you like rocks? We got them. <laughs> I, got, I got one for you. Here, here at Rock Station, what do you call it? The rock shop? Rock shop. We're on a roll. Like yeah, rock and roll. Good, we yeah. sell rocks around the clock. Yeah, we, oh, we nice. sell rocks so you don't have to. <laughs> How about this? How about this? The rock shop, uh, you'll get your delivery on time because of ship station. Yeah, that's good. That's what I'm uh, saying. Save time. time by funneling all your orders into one simple interface no matter what you're selling. Save money when you compare carrier options and choosing the best shopping solution every time. Your small business can access the same discounted rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. Save your sanity. <laughs> Knowing your orders are handled and you're getting the best rates. Uh, I've lost my line. Make shipping the easy part of having an online store and you have you have bigger ideas to think about because why are you wasting your mind thinking about shipping? You could be thinking of other things. Like you don't have to just sell rocks. Yeah. You could be the rock and sand shop. Oh. Or, you know what I mean? Like you could branch out. Trees. You go, we did just sell rocks. Now we're also selling boulders. We're going big. Like pebbles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um, Anything gravel. you can get for free in nature <laughs> for us sells. Gravel. Yeah, like your shop's literally a shop that was on the Flintstones. Mulch. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder 98% no wonder of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it as long as they're in business. It's that good. ShipStation, ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my offer code. This is a different one. Jim, Jim, J I M, to get 50, to get oh, 50, 60 day trial free. That's two months free for no hassle, stress free shipping. Just go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Jim. Shipstation, make ship happen. Um, okay, uh, Professor Black, how did the monarchy originate? Jim said, I don't know. Someone defeated someone, lady in the lake, sword in the stone. So <laughs> now you got that one totally wrong. Tribal <laughs> leaders. So there were there were tribes living in England. It was, as it were, the most powerful tribe, the House of Wessex, becomes the first kings of England in the 10th century. Mm. Oh, I'd like to change it to the House of Essex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wessex. Oh, oh, Wessex. Wessex. Right. <laughs> Still got but, it wrong. You know, <laughs> thereafter, he's doing bloody well. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, British national anthem, "God Save the Queen." Um, that's got that one right. The "God Save the Queen" was the national anthem in Australia right up until the early, I believe, nineteen seventies or late nineteen sixties. We still had to sing "God Save the Queen," and um, to this day, you still have some Australians who still acknowledge that that's the what they prefer to have. What is it now? Uh, Advance Australia Fair. It's a pretty weak old song. Yeah. <laughs> it, it has is. the c word in it. Though. Oh, they keep okay. they keep on they keep on changing the, the lyrics to Advance Australia Fair because it's like every now and again it gets cancelled because it used to be Australian sons let us rejoice and they went don't let the bloody Australian sons right so they had to change it to Australians uh, all and all this type of rubbish. Very controversial. I never never thought about the king thing though because I've only ever been alive when there's been a queen. So I never thought that you'd have to sing it, God Save the King. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Well, that was how it was originally done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that when the, the song was originally started, it was God Save the King. 
Yeah. And so the thing is they're going to have to change it back. I imagine when the Queen dies, and I hope she never does, <laughs> um, but when the when the Queen dies and they change it back to God Save the King, that's going to be a big adjustment for everyone to learn the new lyrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, that assumes that people know them at the moment. You know? I, like, I like how Forrest looked at me so earnestly like, that won't be hard at all. I don't know any of the words besides God Save the Queen. I'm done after well, that. What is that tune? Because that tune is used in America for something else. So so you know this tune. Dun, 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 bum, yeah. bum, Our country, bum, tis of thee. Our country of is of thee. Tis, tis, tis. Tis, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty. Yeah, so that's an American song. Where does that? Do you know uh, the answer to this, Jeremy? No, I don't. No, yeah, I don't. yeah, no, it's it's got it's got no, America. It's, it's, it's sure. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't know who ripped it it's off from cultural who. Cultural appropriation. Well, England was before us, so I'm assuming they. Yeah, I, okay. well, actually, friend Google I don't now. know because I used to teach at Durham University, and when I went to, in fact, North Carolina to give some lectures, I actually tried to make a joke and said, you know, I I was from Durham, founded by immigrants from North Carolina, and you know, they had no sense of humor. They didn't get it at all. <laughs> uh, the Americans, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> Um, it's your British dry sense of humor we don't get. Um, <laughs> that's a good It's funny, it's funny, it's funny the, the, the British always think the Americans have these, this silly sense of humor. They're stupid. They like stupid things. And we're, no, the British have a pretty stupid sense yeah, of humor. Yeah, but that's the whole By thing. The way, I've got an American point for you yeah. where I think I'm right in which you said one, you, your answers were jolly good, but one of them I think you got wrong. Where you said the Commonwealth was everything which had the Union Jack in part of the flag. Hmm. I think you'll find the state of Hawaii has a Union Jack in part of the flag, but it's not part of the Commonwealth. Oh! Because that was moved over the thing. And also, obviously, Canada no longer has that. Australia, Australia, see, when Australia wanted to become a republic, um, this is in the late 1990s, Australia had a referendum to become a republic because we're still part of uh, the monarchy, right? And so Australia has a, has a character that we call the Governor General. And the Governor General is just there as a figurehead and has no power except for in the 70s when they changed. It turned out he could um, change, like basically go, the Republicans are out, the Democrats are in. He had the oh. power to do that. And he did it in a thing called the dismissal, right? So anyway, Sounds uh, like a reality they still show. have that. So we have a Prime Minister and we have a, what did I just say the bloody thing was? Governor General. Governor General. So they wanted to change it to Republic and they – I wanted to change to a republic. I, I, I like our ties to, to Britain, but I don't think we should have any type of thing like that. I don't even think the Queen does because when we lost the referendum and we kept the Queen, the Queen came on the telly like this. Really? <laughs> 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 and she went, all right, then I'll keep governing you as good as I can, you know. Anyway, so so they did this thing. They they did a fear campaign in the monarchists where they said, they said, do you want there to be 48 changes to our constitution? And those 48 changes were just changing the word governor general to president. So there was no law changes. There were word changes that were necessary if you were passing on to the whole thing. And then they were going, and this, and they go, and this president can change governments, which the governor general did back in the 70s. And then they just showed pictures of Hitler. It's, <laughs> it was like this, is this what you want? <laughs> now, my father wanted a republic, and then he voted for the monarchy because he was like this. Well, I don't want the monarchy, but I don't want Hitler. <laughs> so Australia's not going to have one of those referendums forever. Is that- As you know, most of the countries in the Commonwealth are now republics. Yeah. So they the first one was India. When India, you know, came independent, got rid of the monarchy, and then the question was, could you be a member of the Commonwealth if you didn't have the monarch? And they decided yes. And since then, there's very few places left. I think there's about nine, which, including Australia, which are not republics, but everywhere else in the Commonwealth is actually a republic. New Zealand as well is one of one of the nine. And and the, the thing is, it's it's we'd still be part of the Commonwealth. We just yeah, as you said, we wouldn't we'd be I, a republic. I gotta say the Hawaii flag. I've never even looked. I've been to Hawaii several times. I've never even looked at their flag. All right, well, you know how yeah. Hawaii was... I'm Hawaii. looking at it now. It's like it is a Union Jack. It's like the thing that's in there. Hawaii was found in the same way Australia was found oh, yeah, by, by Captain James Cook, and Captain James Cook was an explorer I, from England. I, I know, but... But, but then he went to Hawaii, <laughs> and they, they thought he was a king or something. He conquered he conquered Hawaii. It's a different and then, episode. And then they fucking killed him, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. The reason Hawaii's got the Union Jack in is because in the late 19th century, when Hawaii had an independent 
independent monarchy. They actually, most of them wanted to stay independent from America. And they sort of tried to chummy up to the Brits and the Brits didn't want war with the Americans. So, you know, America was able to seize it, but they left the Union Jack in its flag. I'll, I'll tell you the best thing that Britain... And you can also eat bread and butter pudding in Honolulu. I've done it. So it's an <laughs> example of English culture in the middle of the Pacific. Oh, yeah, they're, they're also chucking spam down like it's no one's business. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, didn't didn't um, New Zealand change their flag to get the Union Jack out of there? No, no, New Zealand has the same flag as Australia, so it's missing one star and their stars. Our oh. stars are writ. Uh, they had a contest to get no, rid of. They, they've got a contest at the moment to change the flag, but nothing's gone through. Oh. And speaking of New Zealand, I have a question for you, Professor Black. I was in New Zealand and I was river rafting or really kayak. And then I asked them if anyone was allowed to come up the rivers. And they told me that the queen owns all the rivers. In, do, do you know that? Or are they just lying no, to make them from America? That. I don't believe it for a second. Ah. What, it probably, what it probably means is it's public land. Yeah, he, they said, oh, the queen owns them, yeah, but she that, lets everybody it use them. It means guess. it's public land. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So the, the queen does have a massive, uh, I believe, uh, real estate portfolio, correct? Where she, yeah, if you, want, if you want barren bits of Scottish moorland, yes. No, but I, but I hear she, has, she owns a few McDonald's in her portfolio. Or is that a myth? No. I mean, I think, put it like this, I don't think the royal family is suffering from poverty, but on the other <laughs> hand, it does have quite expensive maintenance bills on its buildings wow. and on its pensions. Um, it's not really, in, I mean, in, in Britain, the big issue is, quite frankly, whether Scotland becomes independent, and if Scotland becomes independent, whether Scotland eventually becomes a republic or not. And, you know, people debate that. Um, I think in as far as most British people are concerned, particularly most English people, you know, every so often there are there is Republican sentiment, and then they look and see what they get in terms of politicians standing forward to be presidents, and they think to themselves, well, you know, I think we'd rather have the monarchy. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of affection for the Queen. There is less affection, I think it's fair to say, for Prince Charles. Um, but the idea that you would prefer, whether you were on the left or the right, one of your politicians or the other side's politicians to the monarchy, I don't think... There's much support for that. So what? So they always throw out a figure um, and how much a taxpayer has to pay for the monarchy. I think it's like something like seven p a day per person or something. It's quite high, like like per person per day. I can't remember the exact figure, but it, it's it's what the monarchy costs. And then people start using this argument that if we get rid of the monarchy, the monarchy brings in so many tourists. And it's good for their economy in that sense because people visit Buckingham Palace and they come and see Windsor Castle and they do all that type of stuff. If you got rid of the monarchy, do you think it would hurt tourism? Because all those buildings would still exist. The history would still be there. People could still go to the museums and they could still do the ceremonial oh, yeah. changing can of the guard, etc. I don't disagree with that, but there are costs of to be head of state. I mean, let me give you an example. I was once on um, I-95 between Philly and Wilmington, mm. and all the traffic on the other side of the road was stopped there were police on the, all the interchanges, and that was because then Vice President Biden, as he then was, was going home for the weekend, so they just closed half of I-95. Well, that's because he's very old and shouldn't be driving a but, car. <laughs> yeah, but God alone knows how many policemen they had to do that. So I think you've got to be realistic. It costs a lot of money in most, not all countries, in most countries to have a head of state. But the British have a system. It may or may not be the system you would have started with now, but in terms of thinking of the change, I think... Um, I don't think there's an enormous popularity for a change at the moment. I may be wrong, but I just don't think there is at the moment. But don't you think that money would still be spent on – they're still being spent on the Prime Minister? Boris Johnson still needs a cavalcade of cars and stuff like that. That wouldn't change Well, anything. actually, funnily enough, funnily enough um, – if you're thinking in terms of clearing the road uh, for a prime minister or a president hmm. um, uh, or a monarch, I mean, what I find very strange is that, um, if anything, I would say the American president costs a hell of a lot more than both the British monarch and the British prime minister put together. Yeah, I mean, I you're that. really seeing an imperial system hmm. uh, when you're looking at... I'm not criticising it. No. I'm just simply 
talking about in terms of cost, or for this matter, those enormous vanity projects they call presidential libraries. I mean, they're not exactly free, you know. Oh, I want to go to Trump's when that presidential library, <laughs> just like the Playboy section. <laughs> It'll be fantastic. All the colouring in books. All of his tweets. <laughs> Yeah. All the crosswords that are misfilled out. Yeah, it'll have one of those domes that you put your hand on and your hair sticks up. <laughs> I like how you said you're not trying to insult our country. It's like, our, uh, I'm insulting uh, no, 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 no. I'm insulting No, 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 no. <laughs> Professor Box said, I'm not trying to insult your country. I'm like, our country's perfect. <laughs> how dare you? No, no, actually, what's interesting, one way to look at it is that, uh, and this is not bad or good, America and Britain have different forms of monarchy. You have an elective monarch. Mm. So in other words, every four years, the you elect your head of state, <laughs> who in effect is your monarch, has enormous powers, and you then have the advantage and the disadvantage of an election. The advantage is you're picking, as it were, in theory, the most talented person, not somebody who's simply the son or daughter of somebody else. The disadvantage is you can actually find it a very divisive process. If the British system, which is a hereditary monarchy, you have the advantage that it's usually pretty clear who's going to be monarch. The disadvantage doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get a monarch who's very competent. But in Britain, since the monarch doesn't have very much power now, that doesn't really matter. The, yeah. the, but being born into a monarchy, that always amazes me because if I was born, if I let's say I was a little Prince George, right, and what is he now, nine or eight or something like that? I remember my mother was more excited about his birth than my son. So, he, <laughs> so it was after that. So he's about seven, right? And um, and so, but if if I knew I'd be, he knows already at seven he's going to be king. And I'm sitting around school, and then someone bloody slaps a ball out of my hand, and I'd be like, "This, you're also getting your fucking head cut off, yeah. man." As soon as I'm king, you're done, mate. HBO Max has an animated series called Prince George, and it's like from the perspective of him, and he's just like this asshole of a kid, and it's it's very funny. I- I once before so I once performed stand up in front of Prince William at um at when he was at uh, St Andrews University. Oh, oh. and I there, tell you, you got most things right, but there was one minor one you got wrong. Actually, they've changed the system now so that women and men have equal hereditary. So after. Uh, Prince George, if Prince George it doesn't survive or for whatever reason, the next heir is not his younger brother. It, in fact, is Princess Charlotte. Oh. What? Which was just one? as – They've got, they got three they got kids. Three, yeah. I oh, I always thought that was – I, I didn't know they, they, they had three they, kids. I didn't know they, they had three – It's so that men don't have preference over women in the succession. Oh, oh, I, I, I thought that was always the case. I didn't know that wasn't the case at all. I thought that was always the case. The royal family's progressive. Well, see, the whole thing with the royal family is <laughs> if, if the brother didn't abdicate when he was married to the lady, then it would have gone down to his kids, and the whole royal family changed directions after that and then went to Queen, Queen Elizabeth. And it could have gone through a Edward different. Edward VIII didn't have any children. Edward VIII didn't have any children. Ah, oh, that we um, know of. I hear you. I hear you <laughs> threw it around like um, a farmer in a field, man. Well, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, no, Edward VIII didn't have any children. Unlike, uh, unlike Prince Andrew. <laughs> that's two. That's two um, jokes. I mean, I know. Well, I think uh, you know. I mean, I imagine you're going to be having him at some stage in some um, in some maybe um, institution in the United States. Um, anyway, uh, well, well, no, we're, we're having him on this podcast, and his specialty topic is private islands. <laughs> How do you acquire um, one? Uh, what else did you get? Uh, well, Queen, Queen's wrong? duties. So, because uh, you, you you mentioned that you know they don't have. Oh uh, yeah, he got the Queen's duties fine. He did the Commonwealth fine. He got the role of the royal family fine. Who can marry fine? Two birthdays fine. Incidentally, not just two of the Brits. It's also true of Japan. The emperor has an official birthday and another birthday. Oh no, no, no! These holidays are fantastic. It's, it's like we just had Martin Luther King Day. I mean, look, it's terrible. He was assassinated. Not just that, but you get you get a day, you know, and then you get the President's Day. You know, all these things, you get We're days comedians. From- we get a lot of days. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I, ju- I just like it for everyone else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the first one where you really came a cropper, it doesn't matter to me, is the Queen came to the throne in 1952 
And she was 25. Then. I, I said so, I said the 1950s and she was in her 20s. Yeah, I know, but 1950s isn't the same as 1952. I'm just trying to be helpful. Yeah, no, and then she got yeah, giving us the information, yeah. Jamie. <laughs> and then she got crowned the following year in 53, okay? I, I, um, okay, so who's, I'll test you. Who said this fam- famous sentence? I did not see her passing by, but I will love her till I die. Well, clearly your mother, is it? Or no. You, or, you, or you you replying to your mother. I, 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 think, I think it was not Goth Why Whitlam, not but Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm Fraser, the Australian Prime Minister, or Goth Whitlam, one of the Australian Prime Ministers said that when she visited, and that's like a big famous thing that people say. I don't know. First Queen of England was Queen Victoria. Did he get that right? No. No, I didn't no. get that right, no. No, you didn't get that right. <laughs> it would usually be given as, I mean, I think you should give it as uh, Henry VIII's older uh, daughter, which is Mary, you know, mm. Bloody Mary. Wow, Bloody Mary. But, but you could, there was a civil war after Henry I died in 1135, and one of the candidates was his daughter, Matilda, but she was beaten by his nephew, King Stephen. Um, what, what so, in a race or to death? Uh, in the in the Civil War, but you could say that Matilda had a claim. But in terms of actually being accepted, crowned, all the rest of it, it would be Mary in 1553. And why was she called Bloody Mary? Well, uh, because of the Protestants who were never reached uh, menopause, uh, who were butchered. <laughs> how many did she? How many people did she murder? Well, she didn't personally murder well, yeah, anyone. I know, but I mean, like, no, but I mean, uh, several hundred. Mm. Oh, okay. And that's a Bloody Mary. Yeah. Is that who that ship is named after here? The Queen Mary? It was the Queen Mary no, in no. Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was named after the Queen Mary, who was George V's wife. Got it. So Mary the I was queen from 1553 to 1558. And then her younger half-sister, in other words, another, another daughter of Henry VIII, uh, was Elizabeth I who was queen from 1558 to 1603. What can, can you be bumped off the throne? Can you, can there be a, a, like a mutiny where the family goes, you're like for say mental illness or you've just made a lot of bad decisions or is there no way to get off until death? Unless you say you want to abdicate. Well, I mean, with George III, um, he was judged in the end to be mentally not up to it. So they had a regency. His, um, oldest son. He actually had nine sons and six daughters. His oldest son, uh, George, became the Prince Regent and, uh, as it were, was was acting monarch until George III died. Um, now, now so, who, sorry, go on. Sorry. Now, who gives... Um, okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the present moment, you know, there's no rule book in the English Constitution, really. So nobody knows what would happen in running into the future. All we've really got is the past as a set of guidelines. Okay, so we, we now have the Prince of Wales is the next one, and then the next one will be the Prince of Cambridge. And then you have all these different things. We, had, we had, the, had the Duke of Cambridge, and then we had the Prince of Edinburgh and all that sort of stuff. Who makes... The, what city or, or or region of England you get given, right? And right. and do you have to have an affiliate? Like, did the Prince of Edinburgh have to rock up to Edinburgh every now and again and say hi? Duke, well, the Duke of Edinburgh, no, he didn't Duke. do that. I mean, but the, but the point is it, the Queen decides what titles they have and there are some counties um, or what in America you'd call them states, which are traditionally ones that the royal family has given title, has taken for title. So the Duke of York, Prince mm. Andrew's place, is an example of that. Whereas there are some other counties where there are actually families of dukes who, you know, and therefore you would not use those titles. So, for example, there's a private family, the Cavendishes, who are dukes of Devonshire. So you're not going to be having a royal duke of Devon or Devonshire. Okay, why are all the dukes and the princes of places? Edinburgh, York, Cambridge, these are all lovely, picturesque towns, beautiful yeah, places. Right. Nobody's picking Duluth or uh, Detroit or Flint. Yeah, yeah exactly no, 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 but no one's ever the Duke of Blackpool. Right, yeah, we don't have any right. of the Duke of Warrington. Why do the shitholes never get anything going? Sorry for anyone from Blackpool listening, but it's a <laughs> fucking shithole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I'm not sure I'd go that far. But anyway, I, you know, you're absolutely right. They tend to be rural counties, although Lancashire, which is where Blackpool which is, Leeds is and, in, yeah. is actually a you know oh, traditionally what's a royal a royal county. Yorkshire's. Well, I mean, well, okay, so. 
What are all the titles? That was a question. We didn't ask it. So there's queen, king, prince, and there's dukes, but is, what is Earl? Duchess. So like, what are all the different royal titles in there? Right. Um, well, look, I'm <laughs> there. As far as the crown is concerned, there's the monarch, king or queen, their spouse, obviously king or, um, you know, so if, uh, a queen if it's a king and so on, or a prince if it's a, a queen who's the monarch. Then they can choose, the monarch can choose what titles to give their children. So, um, you know, I think Prince Edward was made Duke of Wessex after a bit. Uh, Prince Andrew was made Duke of York and so on. No, not earls. Earls are sort of members of the ordinary aristocracy. Did Camilla get to call herself, because she's the Duchess, right? She's a Duchess, correct? Duchess of Cornwall, Duchess yes. of Cornwall. So if you're called, like, so the person before who was the Princess of Wales, the Princess, Princess Diana, I, I know a little bit about women. Um, they like are. to be called princesses. They love princesses. It's like men want to be called kings. I'm the king. Women want to be called princesses. And even when a man becomes a woman, he calls himself a queen. We always want to be in charge, no matter what outfit we're fucking wearing. And, and, and women always want to be in a position where they're taken care of and pampered. I'm sorry, you've done this, not me. Just check, prove me wrong. No, I'm a queen. Yeah, yeah, but you're that type of person. That's you, you, you bloody get shit done type of a person, <laughs> right? Um, so, so why would you, after it was print, the beloved Princess Diana, why would she go? And I'd like to be called Duchess. I've seen enough Disney films to know a Duchess is up to no good <laughs> and is sending your kids to boarding school right away. So, simple question, what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this may surprise you, but they don't ring me up or you up to say, you know, we were thinking about this. I don't have to oh, you, you, you. you don't want you could sleep with a princess. You don't want to show. Who did you shag last night? A duchess? <laughs> oh, she, she sounds like she could take a punch. That sounds like a hefty person. <laughs> Why do you, you don't like duchess? I think duchess I sounds I think duchess fun. sounds kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, duchess sounds like she has a cake that she likes on the regular. Yeah. Like the whole thing just sits there with a fork and doesn't cut into it. <laughs> Plows her own field. Um, <laughs> let's see some other. Well, we did. That was Bloody Mary was that you got the West Side Stalker wrong. Hmm. Um, well, King became the first English monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne. Um, I don't even know what your answer was. Uh, it, it was it was Bertie's brother, the one that, that, that I've. I, 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 Edward, Edward Prince Edward, and he, he was he was played by Guy Pierce in the King's Speech, right? But he he was the one that that he sort of he did. Am I? I I've seen a documentary about this. He sort of he wasn't a Nazi, but he did um he did party with him, right? He had a few bevies with him and and had a good time. He, yeah, I mean he uh, he visited Hitler at Berchtesgaden, and he had. Uh, fascistic uh, sympathies. I think there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And so the Queen was very like, why did you fucking do that for him? <laughs> and then so Birdie was the one, he died of the lung cancer, right? And he had, um, yep. yeah, he died of lung cancer and he, he they, they were big smokers, the royal family, right up until. Well, as was, as was just about everybody in that period. And the thing that's worth bearing in mind is that George the Sixth, Bertie, and his father, George the Fifth, had both served in the Royal Navy. And in the, so George the Sixth, for example, as a young man, had been at the Battle of Jutland, uh, which was the biggest naval battle in European waters in the 20th century. And it was pretty common for sailors and people in the Navy of any rank to smoke very, very heavily. Yeah. So it's not surprising that uh, he got lung, lung cancer, really. And, um, the, and when I said the Queen was a mechanic um, in the Second World War, what, was she an actual? Was she just there just to make up numbers? Because I, I feel like when Prince Harry was in the military, I don't no, like. No, I know no, he no. Went... she wasn't there. She wasn't there just to make up numbers. She did things for the trans in the transport corps. I mean, it was part of the pro the process of conscription of young unmarried women. Um, but, and was she working on uh, tanks or was she working on cars? What was her? What was her? Uh, lot, what she what Americans would call trucks. Right. So you could you could come in, you you go to speak to the Queen, you go, Oh, the Queen's over here. And then she'd roll out on a skateboard from underneath the truck. <laughs> and she'd be like, Hello. <laughs> I mean, I mean the one of the things which is very interesting um is World War Two did a lot for positive for the reputation of the royal family. And in particular, 
the decision to stay in London during first the bombing and then the rocket attacks, the V1s and the V2s, was really quite important to the positive reputation that the royal family had uh, very strongly by the end of the war. Because they didn't leave Buckingham Palace, did they? They stayed, correct? During the, the Well, they did, didn't leave London. They visited around London, you yeah. know. Uh, I mean, George VI went to Normandy and, uh, you know, he went he went to visit some of the fronts. He also went to, uh, to witness the crossing of the Rhine in 45. But, you know, essentially he stayed either in London or in war zones. Mm. So the the weighing of the guests, do we know the answer to this? Does the queen I have, weigh? I have no idea. Yeah. I've never yeah, heard. I've never heard that. Did you get this? Yeah, I, I fa- like I was looking up like facts or whatever, and it's it says it's on the it internet. True. Yeah, then it's got to be a real yeah. thing. They, why, why is it that they do it? I think it was um, stealing the silverware. I think it was because of stealing yeah, things. Going to make that up. Though. Well, I, um, I, but, I I've met but, a few people who have who have met the queen and stuff like that, and there, there's a, there's a whole thing you got to do with the curtsy and the bow, and then you. It's mom like ham or ma'am like ham or something mom like whatever, and you, and you got to do that. But is it true that you can't start eating till she eats, and when she finishes eating, you have to stop eating? That's the theory. Yeah. Fuck! You never want me to I be mean, king, I, mate. I, I, oh, I, 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 I woof down food. Everyone would be on their first mouthful, <laughs> and I'd be like, "And done." <laughs> uh, I've met the queen to talk to, and. Um, um, you know, I think actually it's she has quite hard, hard work. I mean, you know, she's, um, you know, having to talk to lots and lots of strangers, most of whom are fairly nervous about meeting her. And the convention when you meet the Queen is that she leads on with the topic of conversation. You're not supposed to ask her things, as it were. Mm. Um and and that's you know quite a strain if you think about it. Yeah. Well, for her as well because she has to keep conversation yeah. light. That's and what I mean. Mostly, yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. I, 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 John Cleese told me a couple of stories about meeting her, and he said it was very bizarre because you know she was a fan of Faulty Towers or whatever, and. You just sit there and wait for the answers and all type of stuff, you know. By the way, I just looked this up. So who knows if this is true, but it says she really does weigh her guests. The tradition of weighing guests at the start of the three day Christmas festivities dates back to the reign of Edward VII, who was king from 1901 to 1910. He decided that weight gain during their stay was indicative of how much his guests had enjoyed themselves. Oh, Right. So if they right. ate a bunch of food and all that stuff, he's like, had a good time. She's just giving up booze, well, isn't she? The seventh is the last monarch to certainly have a good time. I mean, obviously, <laughs> as you know, he had a very adventurous personal life as far as women were concerned. He also smoked and uh, smoked and ate the most amazing amount of stuff. He smoked these full-length Havanas, and he'd start off with his first one would be after breakfast. Oh, you know, God. I mean, I mean, he really... Um, He's also, from what I remember, I'm happy to be corrected on this, he's the first person in Britain to have had a successful appendicectomy and they knighted the um, the surgeon who performed the uh, operation. I thought they were going to say they knighted the appendix. I really thought that's what <laughs> I thought they were going to say. That. From, from, like, wow. from everything I'm hearing, I reckon the rugs and the curtains in Buckingham Palace must stink. Oh, like yeah. just the amount of cigar smoke and things and just caviar that's been oh, walked into. But it's not like that now. But it's not like that. Look, you go to a, an old pub. I, I was having a drink yesterday in, in Exeter, which is where I now live, mm. in an old pub. And the chap I was having a drink with said, you know, these walls must have once been absolutely thick mm. with, you know, but, no, you know, nobody's been allowed to smoke in English. Um, Since about 2004. Yeah, whatever it was. And, you know, it, the, 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 it, it is very different now in that respect. Do you know and Do you know that when that happened, smoking went up? People were smoking. Not, and do you want to know why? Because why? Uh, what they did was they would move us out of the pubs into the little courtyards area. I was living in London when this happened. They'd move us out into the little courtyard area, and then all of a sudden girls who you couldn't normally talk to, you were being put into a tight little area like that, and they could come and ask you for and a you light. You were so nervous you had to smoke. No. Uh, oh, no, bad. no, you could go, do you want a cigarette? You, can I have a light? Like that's always – it was the best way to meet girls. And between oh. me and you, girls who smoke are well up for it. <laughs> between you and him or everybody else that yeah, listens? This is me and you. Don't listen to anyone else. Okay. <laughs> i got to pick up smoking. Um, the uh, – okay, here we go. The royal house what, – what royal house does the current queen belong to? House of Windsor. 
And then Correct. what was the original name? Jim said it was a German name of some sort. Or? Yeah, Saxe Coburg Gotha. Saxe Coburg. Yeah. Okay. Um, next in line, we did that. Uh, the Royal. This is the Olympics. Oh, what hereditary disease? Do you know this? Uh, was Porphyria. so. It's not the Olympics Porphyria. at all. Porphyria. Was so common in European world. It was called the Royal Disease. What is it? Porphyria. What, what is, is that? that? The fear of being poor. <laughs> Porphyria is a blood disease and um, it has a number of symptoms, including allegedly, I mean, I've never met anybody that has it, um, making your urine purple and sometimes giving symptoms akin to insanity. Mm. Oh, that would drive you mad. Purple <laughs> urine's pretty cool, but the insanity yeah. part's not, yeah. Yeah. Um, it would look like someone had just cleaned the bowl with some. <laughs> oh, the new game. By the way, you said Princess Anne was the, obviously you were just you know having a few uh, after effects of your drinking, but you said Princess Anne was the Queen's uh, sister, Queen, Queen's daughter, Queen's no, yeah. Queen's daughter. Yeah, but but Princess Margaret, she was the fun time one, right? So she didn't go to the Olympics. She was the good looking one of the Queen's Queen's sister, and then Princess Anne did equestrian. Who was the other person in the Olympics? I have no idea. I'm not a sportsman. This uh, is it's. I think it's a do, it's a younger person. Let me just look it up. Go. You can go on to the next one. I'll, okay. Um, um. I didn't ask this. Who do the royals need permission from to marry? I'm pretty sure it's probably uh, Lady of the Lake. Uh, who do they need permission from to marry from the Queen? Under the royal Under the Royal Marriages Act of I think it's 1772 from the monarch. Yeah, from the Queen. Mm, yeah, that's, I figured that was. Probably why I skipped it. Yeah. From the Queen's curry cousin, Larry. Okay. Hey, here's one for you, Jeremy. Do you remember in Windsor Castle when uh, it was Prince William's 21st birthday and a man dressed as Osama Bin Laden with a merkin on and, and a beard and wearing a dress sneaked into Windsor Castle, stole the microphone and, um, you know, got through six layers of – do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy's called Aaron Barshak and he was a comedian. He called himself the comedy terrorist and he wasn't getting much stage time. So his whole persona was he'd run on stage dressed as Osama Bin Laden. This is like 2003. Like this is like He didn't get Lord. shot. He did very lucky. He was well, very lucky. I, I, I'll tell you a funny story about what happened to him. So so the way he got in, he jumped over the wall and it was a fancy dress party. He was dressed in a turban and a dress with a, with a pubic hair merkin underneath that he would flash every now and again. He jumped over the barrier and there was, a, there was a security guard or someone who worked for the royal family or a cop or something, and he came up and he said, are you all right? And he went, oh, I'm so drunk and I've, I've, I've got myself completely lost, I have. And so this guy walked him through six security checks <laughs> and all of a sudden he found himself inside and the speeches were all happening. The Queen and Prince Charles was up there and Prince William was having a speech. This guy just goes on, he snatches the microphone from Prince William's hand and Prince William thought, oh, Harry's doing something to me. <laughs> <laughs> like that, right? He stayed on stage for so long he'd ran out of material. He'd never done this long before. <laughs> and so then the secu <laughs> security come to get him. Now, this is so like they lock him in the dungeon. It's a fucking castle, man. There's dungeons. So they lock this guy in the dungeon in Windsor Castle and the bloke who let him through all the checkpoints, he came down to him. And he went, oh, you're in so much trouble. You don't know how much trouble you're in. And he said, not as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what body language indicates the queen is done with conversation? Do you know the answer to that? Yeah, having conversed to the queen, I can tell you exactly. Oh. You were told. I, 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 uh, I met her when I was given a, uh, an honor. So in other words, uh, I'd helped in the in stamp design and, you know, the um, and um, you're told um, uh, that at the end of the sort of conversation with the Queen, she'll pin your honour on you, your badge or whatever you want to call it, and then um, you're supposed to sort of bow, and then the Queen, sorry, the Queen will indicate it's time to you to go. And the, the I remember the equerry saying, the Queen will shake your hand and push you at the same time, as in in the handshake. <laughs> well, people and I do thought, that to me at parties. How on earth? Uh, you know, I'm over six foot uh, and quite heavy. And I thought, how on earth could somebody give you a push through a handshake? And the answer is that's exactly what <laughs> happened. Oh, well, she got a lot of practice. I would push her back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, use your weight and height, Jeremy. <laughs> 
Um, and do do you know what food is banned at Buckingham Palace? Jim said peanut M and M's. I, I oh M and M's are your t- uh, your uh, the your, candy. Uh, it's a candy. candy yeah. 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 What I do you mean know, your no. candy? Leicester Square has an M and M store that's fucking <laughs> four stories high. <laughs> don't act yeah. all English like they're stupid Americans <laughs> in their M and M's. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that of Americans. What I meant by your candy is you made it, you manufacture it. Yeah. It's your product. No, you know, so that just as Boeing's are your planes, even if they're being flown by British Airways. I'll change you my know. answer to wine gums. She doesn't like wine gums. There, that's British for you. You know what, Kelly? Did you find this? Yeah, it's uh, it says. Uh, she doesn't have garlic or too much onion at anything at the oh. royal table. She, she says doesn't spice. So she doesn't spice. like spice. Yeah, she does. He likes the food very bland. Do you know the onion is the only food that's used in all cuisines across the world? Onion makes everything better. It's the only thing in every food culture. Everyone <laughs> uses onion. It's the only crossover food on the planet. It grows anywhere. You have it on top of sushi a little bit. Like like okay. this, Don't the, give it the onions. Dogs. Onions. Don't the give thing. it the dogs. Onion. Bad for dogs. The, all right. The humble <laughs> onion. Um, okay, so I think we went through all the questions. So this is part of the show. Oh, I still right. want to talk about the royal family, though. <laughs> do you want to ask? Do you want to ask Professor Jeremy Black some questions? All right. Well, we never found out who was the second person in the Olympics. Oh, it's uh, Zara, Anne's daughter. Zara, yeah. I talked about. I think Zara's uh, Zara's not a bad sort. Zara's, and she was equestrian as well. But Zara got herself like a nose ring, and she was a bit more fun than everybody else. And she she used to come out to Australia and have a good time in the bars. We're all Team Zara. Yeah, nothing wrong with her. <laughs> okay. uh, do you want to ask any questions before we get to them? All right, all right, all right. right. Uh, uh, um, uh, what's the Queen's? No, I don't have anything. <laughs> you said you want to keep talking about the royal family. I know, but I just organically, don't put me on the spot. I feel no, I, I could understand that. You asked me, you said to me you were going to ask me something surprising. i tell you what, the one that surprised me, I did a biography some years ago of George III. George III is the only human being to have had a planet in the solar system named after him. They changed the plan, the name afterwards, but the he would give, was giving money to the astronomer Herschel, and Herschel found what we now call Uranus, and it was originally called after George III. So that's a rather unusual thing for a- I'm going to start a, calling yeah. my asshole George no, no, III. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he used to be called his anus. <laughs> um, his royal anus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, so the Queen stopped, stopped with the booze, right? Because I did a whole stand-up routine about this. The Queen would have, I think I said something, it was four cocktails a day, two shots of alcohol in each thing. That's eight things. So she was pretty much an alcoholic. But what is she now? She's like 90, I want to say 92. She I think she's 95. No, 95. Okay, so she's she's old, right? And she's just given up alcohol uh, just now. Uh, do you think she'll stick with it? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think she's supposed to now have maybe one drink a day or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you know. But it's a tall think, boy. <laughs> it's a yard. I think, doing, look, I think she's doing tremendously well. I think there's enormous affection for her. And as you said correctly, just about everybody alive, that's the only monarch they remember yeah. uh, in Britain. So the, it's going to be an enormous shock, which will probably surprise people from abroad. Um and it'll be a shock for whether people are monarchists or republicans. I think it's going to be much harder for a new monarch because we're in a different kind of society. But on the other hand, every single time our politicians of whatever political party muck up, you can understand people thinking, mm, I'm not quite so sure whether we want a presidency or not. So, you know, it's a tricky one. I mean, obviously, I know in the United States where the choice you had last time, you obviously felt that you were having a fantastic choice. And, of course, in America, inconceivable, isn't it, that you could have a president who was the son of another president? Absolutely inconceivable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm being ironical. George Bush, George Bush. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. We're I'm, actually going right back. I mean, John Quincy Adams and John Adams. I just want I mean, to be alive for Chelsea Clinton's presidency. What about Eric Trump? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to be alive when everyone else is dead. <laughs> um, I, mean, it, I think it's interesting that there are some monarchies really muck up. I mean, the last king of Spain, Juan Carlos, who was forced to abdicate because of all the financial and other scandals he was in, 
hasn't really done the reputation of the Spanish Was monarchy. he the first one, Carlos? Because I think he's the first one. That would be a good th- – okay. Um, Are yeah. you doing a pun? Yeah, I was. Mm. I was. Yeah, it was. It just didn't work. It didn't, didn't work. work. <laughs> Look, <laughs> they I can't was, all be James Jeremy. People, people get Kelly into me did. because my hit and miss ratio is so high that these things stick out when I make a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so I'm going to stick up a little bit for Charlie, right, for, for Prince right. Charles. Because oh, I remember being a kid and he used to come out. I, I, w- I was there when he, they visited for the Bicentennial in 1988 and we had big concerts and Prince Charles and Diana came in and we all had to stand up and all that sort of stuff. And so people give Charlie a bit of shit. I don't really know why. He, he's, he's good with local farming. He's, he's yes. uh, good with agriculture in, in, in the country. He's uh, a huge comedy fan. He he was a big fan yes. of the Goon Show and always a big proponent of comedy thing. He goes to see comedy and really likes comedy. Um, but you know, some of the things that Kate, okay, do you remember back in the day? This is I would want to say the 1970s. He came out to visit Australia, and there's footage of him coming out of the ocean, right? And he's coming out in his speedo, and he comes out of the ocean, and then this really hot Australian chick just runs up and slaps a kiss on him, and he goes. Whoa! like that and then she runs away and you know what that was a that turned out to be a phony thing that turned out to be footage that uh, the royal family to make him look more like a playboy and more desirable and there was no women running up to bloody kiss that wing nutted idiot <laughs> i was going to stick up for him what happened yeah. <laughs> Classic <Jim. Devolved> quickly. <laughs> um, I, have, I have a question megan markle is she the first i'm sure that's been said is she the first american that's ever was brought into the fold of the royal family. Is well, there that- was the one that he well, ad- I mean, ad- already, abducted. Already mentioned um, the Duchess of Windsor. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. um, so I think it's fair to say that um, not the first. Um, I think in the case of Meghan Markle, what's interesting is that when she got married to with Prince Harry there was a lot of very positive coverage of that marriage as um, the idea being that this was a modernizing aspect, et cetera, et cetera. And what then happened after that was, I think, to put it mildly, unfortunate. Um, Now, clearly, people have all sorts of different points of view. All I'd say is it's probably not brilliant um, if you come to a country to give interviews slagging off the locals, which is what in effect she did. Oh, she did that, um, she did that early on, did she? Yeah, she did that early oh. on. And that, that did not go down very well. So the popular press then switched. Initially, the popular press had been pro. I mean, Harry was a very popular figure. And the popular press then switched to the exact opposite. Here you've got these entitled people being rude and calling us all racists. And that was very, um, so the the mood changed. And um, I think, um, I can't quite see how easily uh, there can be a rowback from that position. Both sides now seem to be quite entrenched, which is unfortunate because I'm sure that's not what anybody intended. I'll tell, I'll tell a quick little story. So my my, my wife is British, a uh, mixed race person from the UK. So when the Oprah interview happened, she was uh, she was probably more sympathetic to Meghan than anything else because she, she you know that's where she stood. And so uh, my little name drop. I was we were having dinner with Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> Right, as you do, uh, you don't know who. I have no idea who Lisa Van. <laughs> well, is, then you haven't written a you haven't like written a true book, book about the royal family. Then, <laughs> if you Lisa Vanderpump is British, but she is American royalty. She's the queen of Beverly Hills. She's the fucking queen of West Hollywood, man. She's my buddy. Right. I, I love Lisa. She's a reality star, yeah. reality yeah. TV star, a restaurantur, man. She yeah. has, I know, but she's business. famous because she's a reality. It's it's fine. You, it's but she, she's a she, she, she's, she's, a, she's a great lady, Lisa yeah. Vanderpump. Great lady. Anyway, so so me and Lisa Vanderpump, and then like the interview had just happened, and my wife was angry at the royal family for that day because you know she blah blah blah, and uh, and so Lisa go, Lisa goes to she goes, have you seen? Did you see that interview with Oprah? And then and then Taisy goes, oh well, wasn't it terrible? what they did to Megan, and then Lisa Vanderpump goes, what has that girl got to complain about? A few bad interviews. So what? She's got tons of money and she gets to walk around a palace wearing a tiara. That's all I've ever wanted. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. So here is a part of the a show called Dinner he Party. He did it. He did? He gave it to it. He gave us our, our obscure Yeah, fact. I gave it to yeah. one with George III and the planet. Yeah, the planet. Oh, I'll give you one. My anus. I'll, 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 I'll think of one. I'll get one I'm for sorry. You. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So it's now, okay. now I'll just give it, uh, we'll wrap it up. Get, okay. Can we Google some uh, faux pas quotes from Prince Philip? God bless his soul. And we'll end on that. I was. <laughs> I always love one of those where he where he said something stupid and people get angry at him. You know, I love Prince Philip. I thought Prince Philip was the the shit. I loved whenever he gave zero fucks all the time and he went around. He was he was a tremendous man. You know, the thing to bear in mind about Prince Philip is he risked his life for his country, um, and that's Germany. impressive. Whichever, whichever country you're in, mm. that's impressive because mm. all too many people are quite happy to be people that send other people to risk their lives. And, you know, bobbing around in the Mediterranean in uh, World War II, uh, having uh, German submarines and aircraft, you know, uh, throw the shit at you. I think that was pretty, you know, that's pretty brave. No, I, I wasn't joking. I had a lot of time for Prince Philip, man. He entertaining, seemed like a good guy. I had no problem. We haven't got any one, any good, one good quote. Yeah, this one's kind of funny. To Simon Kellner, a Republican editor of The Independent at Wins Windsor Castle Reception, what are you doing here? And he says, I was invited, sir, Philip. Well, you didn't have to come. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Like that. That's what a lot of people say uh, to me after sex. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use that all I was the invited. time. Well, you didn't have to come. <laughs> Let me give you an example, which I can pass on. I mean, um, a friend of mine uh, who was a senior politician he told me that the last time he met Prince Philip, who was by then, you know, on his nearly on his way out, it was for a lunch of privy councillors at Windsor Castle. And Prince Philip observed correctly that since uh, red kites had been reintroduced, it's a kind of a, a bird, a bird of prey, the number of songbirds were declining and that that was a problem that people needed to think about. It's quite interesting that both Prince Philip and Prince Charles they have a sense of the environment, not a sort of cuddly, soft, you know, let's all stroke the environment, uh, but a sense of the environment as a world in which species, including human beings, compete. And, in, and they've got a sort of sense, and maybe it's because you, you come from a family that's, that's got, looks like all of our families, long lasting, but families that have a sense of their past. Uh, maybe that you've got a sense of something other than just yourself and your own generation. Right. And I think that's impressive. Final question, and just and and uh, just answer this as you believe will happen, not what you want to have happen, or you can answer both ways. Um, how long do you think the royal family has before it's it ends? I think that really depends which part of the their world you're talking about. In Australia, I don't think it's going to last very long. Uh, maybe 10 years. Um, in Scotland, maybe 20. Uh, I think actually in England, quite a while. Right. Yeah. Well, Professor Jeremy Black, thank you for being here today. That was Jeremy, great. I enjoy this, brother. This was a good podcast. Great pleasure. My daughter lives in America. Uh, my father's three sisters all moved to America and married Americans. So I have a lot of affection for America. So all the best to all of you. And thank you very much. Thank you so uh, much for joining you, us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, uh, the royal, oh, 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 there he goes. Um, they go, <laughs> they go, they go, oh, am I not supposed to no, go? Right. Oh, yeah, we just wrap it up. But you're That's fine. Right. And there they go, go. Oh, Zara yeah. can't be in the Olympics. Go, I don't know about that. Oh, oh, do this, it over again. this is my weakest one. Good night, Australia. <laughs> <laughs>